Yes, we about to study a very important part of the experience of the 144,000. They must understand what Babylonian system does the 144,000 find themselves in? This is part of a series, as we've been talking about. We run a series on the introduction to the 144,000. This part is becoming very important as it relates to the fall of Babylon, this Babylonian system. This is our webinar on 721. This is done by Dr. Eman, the electric man. Pull together a few things. We want to make sure that we truly understand what I'm trying to make sure everyone gets a grasp of. The first grasp we have to realize is what situation we find ourselves in. Where are we in history? Where are we? Because if we don't understand our history, we're bound to repeat it. And I'm saying we're repeating. Okay, the Bible lets us know that in the time of Noah, so shall it be at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. So when Yeshua came the first time, there was everybody was deceived. The church was deceiving the people. Everyone was deceived. When he comes back the second time, everyone will be deceived again. That's what he was telling us. Okay, so what does that mean? Where does that put us? Well, we need to understand what was happening before the flood that wiped everything out. So we found out that in the past, every, the heart of man was evil continually only. And that is pretty wicked. <laughs> Use the same word over and over. The heart of man was evil, that's one, continually only. So when it repeats that so many times, then we know that that's, and because of the wickedness of man had reached a great state, then at that point, he had to, or he had to wipe off the planet. Or, as the Bible tells us, that the earth, if we violate the earth, then the earth will spew us out. And if the earth spews us out, you know what that means? It's destroying us. So the same thing, so something they did before the flood. Now remember, we're talking about superior beings. We're talking about beings that were made perfect. We're talking about beings that lived a thousand years, almost 900 and something. So if, we, if people were wicked today and they only lived to 100, and this is how long it took us to you know, get to the point that now we have AI, we have, we'll explain all that in a minute. That we're at the point that they are brainwashing us and trying to keep us under control. So if you lived a thousand years and you had that wickedness, then it was real quick that everything got out of hand. And so they have been discovering planes um, inside of some of these pyramids and inside some of these artifacts of ancient times found on different parts of the, of the world. And one guy said that he was going to test the plane because according to the elite, okay, let's, let's back up a little bit. We talk about the elite who run the system. That's what we're talking about, the system. Okay, we're talking about an entire system that is being run. Okay, when we talk about a system, we're talking about a worldwide system or we could look at it as what we call today the UN or as we call it, World Health Organization, or we call it the International Bankers or the World Bankers. All of these people who are running this show is running the planet and they're running systems, an entire system. So in that system, you have education. In that system, we showed you before with our graph, the merchants of the earth. We talked about how they make food, how they make laws, how they educate you, teach you religion. All of these areas is what we're talking about. 
um, when we're reading about Babylon has fallen, we're talking about a Babylonian system. We're going to talk about the system as we go through. When we talk about Babylon, I assume you must know about Babylon. The first thing we need to do is go back and look at Babylon. So when we go back and look at Babylon, we know that Daniel, in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, Daniel starts to go into Babylon, Babylonian captivity. The first thing they do is they change their names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they changed their names, and Daniel's name was Belshazzar. Okay? So the first thing they do is change your name for you to identify. They change your culture. We looked at this last time in reference to that article. Okay? They change your education system. And they change your food, your diet. So the next thing that they did was change their diet. And Daniel and the three Hebrew worthies decided that they're not going to eat. That's the delicacies, that's the unclean animals, that's all the stuff. And, you know, and now today, what would we call it? We will call it this, you know, the luxuries of um, chicken, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, what do we call other place, um, Lobster House, and all of these different places that they have. Okay? So with these places that everybody had, that we're eating the king's food, okay? Remember, during slavery, we didn't eat the king's food. And because we didn't eat the king's food, guess what happened? We didn't come down with the diseases that slave master came down. But now we eat slave masters' food, and so now we're coming down with the cancer, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, and all of those other things. Okay, so when we're talking about, so when Daniel and him went in, they decided that they were not going to eat the king's food. And so they were on a raw food diet. Okay, so during that time frame, they tested them for 10 days and they found out that they were wiser than anyone else. That's why I try to send people to a 10-day cleanse. Those that went through the three-day cleanse now, the next one that we'll do with you will be a 10-day cleanse. Okay? Just like Daniel and the three Hebrew worthies. So when they went through this, the next thing that happened was that for three years, they were eating their food and they came out 10 times wiser than anybody else. Even the people who taught them, they came out 10 times wiser than their teachers. And so here is the first test. First test is the test of food, as we have been talking about following the nine laws of health. So then after that, as we know, we changed their diet, they changed their names, okay, so that they can no longer identify with their culture. Then they went from there, and today, when we look at this system that we're in, notice what it says in Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. So this is an angel or some entity that is, that is giving some light to the world, because the world is in darkness. That's the way it was at the beginning. That's the way it was time of Noah and the flood. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. What is the message he's trying to tell the world? That's what his message is. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Okay. Babylon, we just described to you, is our world system. Okay. We talk about the food makers. We talk about the, um, the educators. We're talking about all of these different things. So this is what is Babylon is fallen. Okay. We need to try to understand Babylon is full. So what I'll do is I'll highlight it so we can get the point. Okay? And it says not to just fallen once, it says it's fallen. And what has it become? It became three different entities. And this is what it's talking about at the time of Babylon, at the time before the flood, and at the time that we're living in today. Revelation is talking about us today. Okay? It has fallen, the system, as the world system as we called it, as we called it, the international bankers, the, WHO, the World Health Organization, internationalists, and all of these that are running. Okay, these people have decided in the past, okay, let's go back again to before the flood. So before the flood, um, they're finding that people had planes, they had electricity, and all of these different things that we have today, they had in the past. 
it's hard for us to believe, but the cover-up has been so great that they've been just lying to us on every angle. So they're finding all of these different things and people are testing it. Okay, so now what has it become? We have become, in this part, we says the habitation of mercy. So devils are running our show. Okay, running our government, running our systems. And so when you see black men being shot and white people shooting black people and black on black violence, blacks killing black, this is what we're talking about. We people are becoming inhabited. I mean, there's only devils that can think of this way, of the things that we have been brought to. And then it talks about also the second one is every the whole the hangout place of every foul spirit. Okay? And then finally it says that when we talk about foul spirit, so we know that we are the hole, okay? So the hole would be a place like a, a cave. Okay, That's what I would think about it. Or a place where you would congregate, where people can come all together and hang out, and it's nice and comfortable. But we have to look at this hole is these cultures, is these civilizations, is the things that we have drawn to comfort ourselves in. And that in that hole, or in that hiding place, in that temple, or in that organization, we have our spirits. Spirits are not good. Then it says, finally, in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, the part that got me was this hateful part. What are we talking about here? It says that it will be what? Cage of every, not some. We had that unclean, every unclean and hateful bird. I've always asked the question, why do people, all different people hate black people? Now black people hate black people. We got Africans hating America, African Americans hating African. We have you know, all of this, we have whites hating Africans, we have whites hating blacks, we have Indians hating blacks, we have Arabs hating. I mean, it's just a mess. Why is there so much hatefulness, hatred that is in the air? Okay, so what I have concluded was that they know who we are, the people at the top. Not everybody, not every white person, not every Indian person, not every black person, not everybody understands what's going on. But the ones at the top know who we are. And they know that we're a sleeping giant and they are afraid that we will be awakened. And so they have, that's where this hate stuff is coming in. Okay? So now what we are trying to understand is that the merchants of the earth, Beast, the false prophet, and the, the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. We identified them before, gave you pictures of how that system works. Now remember, we're talking about a system, so we're not talking about individual. We're talking about a system that controls everybody. Now, <clears throat> it says, for all nations, no one is escaped. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, let me ask you this question. What does, when you drink wine, what does it do to you? It's supposed to get you intoxicated. So there, that so that all nations are intoxicated in Babylon. The devils, the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird, that's their job. So I think about also a cage, okay? We talk about a cage like a prison. And that's where we find ourselves. We find that so many of our people are being incarcerated. We are seeing that we're in a cage, okay? We're in a lockdown. We're in a system that has us in every part of fashion running after themselves. This is the end of this section that we are looking at. And I hope you can understand 
where 144,000 and where we see ourselves today and what is this Babylonian system that's described to us in the book of Revelation that we're living in, okay? Some call it the matrix, this system of control. And I guess you can look at this, look at this. This is um, an, um, just for obesity, an obesity system app. Yes, this is all this is. Just for them to control us on one level, one level of system of control. As we see, the false prophet are the merchants of the earth. We talked about that. Um, if any of this you want to understand a little more clearer, you have to, um, we'll talk about that in a few seconds of how you can get some more of this material because we have covered this already. We see here, these are the false prophets, the merchants of the earth. We see here the dragon and the beast, okay? Our education system of the church and the education system of the state. We see also this education, this government conditioning that everyone is part of. We see these people that are promising us food is not giving us food. These guys are giving us poison. They're poisoning the air through the chemtrails, through the um, car pollution, through the pollution of fossil fuels, and all of these different things. Okay, so the merchants of the earth are not our friends. We find that inside the food consumption, okay, the FDA says they're checking it, okay? We see here that they influence through our government, okay? Influences here, our individual psychology of how the dragon and the beast are implemented. Then they talk about here, our school system, individual activity. Um, when I came through, you had ex every, every year you had um, physical activity. Now they just said you only, at, in high school, you only have one year of physical activity, okay? They have what we call the urban planning that we plan this, it's called the built environment. We're doing a study just on that. You need to, you know, hey, check out the stuff that we go through. And we talk about the health profession, medical, okay? The pharmacia, the Bible calls it the sorcerers of the earth. Okay, so if you want more of this information, if you wanna continue on, check this out. We suggest that you contact Dr. William Emanuel, Dr. Eman, the electric man. And you might be saying, how we contact him? Okay, hey, he has an email that you can contact him at. It's Emanuel, E-M-A-N-U-E-L, at E-S-N-S-Corp, C-O-R-P dot com. I hope I didn't go through that too fast for you. And we have also a website. Contact him and find out information about his website, okay? And his website is www.peopleofcolor, no spaces, the numeric number one, dot com, okay? Visit our website. And what will you find there? You'll find a schedule of events. You'll find different workshops that we're doing that are, and classes that he has, okay? That's on his online school, okay? He's doing lots of education, he's doing webinars. This is one of the webinars, or one portion of a webinar. We have eBooks that go along with that and books. Also, we'll be able to talk about the three-day cleanse, and he also has a 10-day cleanse. So, I suggest that you if, if, if this is of any interest to you, to follow up. And don't forget, like YouTube. Share the YouTube with someone. Please do not just take this to yourself and don't like it and don't, you know, send it and share it with another. We thank you and we'll be looking forward to hearing from you in the near future. Thank you.